How's it going guys, Mike the Gaming Dad here and welcome back to the channel. Bringing you another build guide this week and in keeping with a lot of the recent content on the channel, this one is going to be a survivor mode build. May I introduce to you, the Artificer. Now let's pretend that we're going into the keep with Ralof because we're annoyed shall we? I mean, it's not like we do this every time. Normally I recommend picking up all the Imperial Light Armour for selling later on, but because our carry weight is going to be cut in half very soon, only grab a few sets of this, as it's all we will be able to carry once out of the cave. In the next room make sure to pick up the salt. Salt is used in the majority of cooking in Skyrim, so is an essential ingredient. There's also some pheasant and rabbit to harvest in this room, and some sacks to raid. And make sure you collect this garlic as well. This is the first alchemy ingredient we will need later on. There's more potions in this barrel, plus more salt on this table, and more rabbit to collect. Once down in the torture room, pick up the torturer's steel dagger. This is the first steel one we find and it'll be useful very shortly. Then unlock the cage for the mage robes and gear. We won't be doing any magic or enchanting in this build, but we can sell this later on. In the next room, take care of the Imperial soldiers and take one of their bows. Archery will be a key component of this build, so it's good to start levelling it early. Now we won't be doing a lot of power levelling in this build, but there is one skill that is going to come in very handy in staying alive in survival mode, and that is Sneak. Before the bear, attack Ralph a few times to level up, if you haven't done already. Once this is done, put this first perk point into Sneak. Once done, crouch behind Ralph and Sneak attacking will become much easier. It's possible to get to level 50 in mere minutes this way, and 50 is all I'm going to jump to. This is because at level 50 we gain access to three very useful perks, Backstab, Deadly Aim and Assassin's Blade. Being able to sneak up and one shot enemies will keep us alive as without health regeneration or any magic use, our Artificer doesn't want to be drawn into too many big fights. That is our first four perk points done, but I'm also going to put a point into Light Armour, Archery and probably Alchemy I think. This last one we won't need straight away but it's good to make sure we aren't short of alchemy points later on. Once out the cave we can switch survivor mode on and this is where the fun begins. Hunger, fatigue and the cold all start to play a part now. Health doesn't regenerate and carry weight is halved, so we need to start making a few inroads into setting up to survive, which is what I will cover off next. Anyone who has watched my guides before will know I tend to stick to the same path when starting out, and that will be the same here as it's resource rich, plus will give us a good amount of gold early on. But whilst we run to our first location, I'll just quickly explain what this build will be. An artificer is basically a skilled craftsman or inventor, so that is what we're going to do. As I say, there'll be no magic involved, and no enchanting of gear either. We also won't be buying any gear. We find it or we make it ourselves, that's it. The only things I want to buy are resources like ingots. Other than that, we make it ourselves. Alchemy will be a cornerstone, as will smithing, and those are the craftsmanship elements of the build. But for the inventor side of things, the backstory I'm leaning towards is our character will be the inventor and user of the crossbow in Skyrim, but I'll explain that a bit more later on. Now we are at our first location, there is a light armor skill book here should you wish to read it, or save it for later, it's up to you. Then pick this chest, but get ready though, the three bandits will attack you once you turn around. Once taken care of, these bandits usually carry hunting bows. This is good as this is an upgrade to the longbow we have, so grab one of these. It's worthwhile now also looking for additional fur armour pieces, to go with the fur boots we already have. And this bandit here has fur braces which is good and that's two of the four pieces down already. Now that is done, off to our second location, which is back north where we just came, and then west over these mountains here. Now drop down onto the Talos worship scene, and raid the Thalmor soldier here for his enchanted robes, plus the random enchanted item. All valuable items worth a lot of gold. Now turn east and run to another bandit camp. Take care of the three bandits here. One of them carries treasure map 1, which is always useful to pick up. 
There's also some mage robes inside the tent here, plus a few items on this tree stump like food and apothecary satchel. Finally there is a one handed skill book in the other tent over here. I managed to get a long sleeve version of the fur armour off these bandits as well, and this is the version we want as it gives the best warmth rating, a crucial new aspect of armour in survival mode. We now need to head down the road to the standing stones. Along this road will be two more ingredients we need to collect. These are thistle and blue mountain flowers. And there are loads of these along this road to Riverwood, so pick up as many as you can find. Once at the standing stones, the first one we want is the thief stone. Now we need to get across the river, so head northwest and jump in. Once over the other side, head up to Anise's cabin. And from here, turn southeast and head down these rocks. Pick up the flawless emerald from inside the skeleton. Normally what we do now is go into the mine back across the river. And we will still do that, but first, due to likely being at our carry weight limit, we will need to go to Riverwood first. So stick to this side of the river and walk north. When you eventually see Riverwood over the river, turn the 180 and into this fallen tree. Pick up the Mora Tapanella mushroom here, this is another ingredient we need. And now loot the treasure map 1 chest. Ah, this is good. This chest contained a corundum ingot for me, and we do need one of these. Now we can head into Riverwood. There are more mushrooms growing around here, so collect any you find. And now find Feindal and start the letter quest. Before we complete that though, head along the mill and pick up the woodcutter's axe from on this table. What are you doing here? Huh. I'll be right down. And then go speak to Gerda and take any useful items she has. Now head to the blacksmith, Alvor, and tell him all the spare gear we don't need. I'm going to keep my bow, arrows, dagger, steel axe and wood axe, but I'm going to sell all the armour except my first set. Now do the same inside the trader. Sell all the armour you aren't using. These magic potions can go as well, they aren't needed and are taking up carry weight. We're also going to sell the ingredients we don't need and just keep garlic, mora tapanella, salt, thistle and blue flowers. These books can go. As can all of this apart from the ingot on the lockpicks. And now look at that, almost 1500 gold already. Now we're feeling a lot lighter, lie to Camilla and say the letter is from Sven. Go and give Feindel the good news and then recruit him as your follower. He can now be used as a free trainer. Buy the archery training from him and then take all of your gold back. But in survival mode you can't level up unless you sleep, so we will need to do more training later on. Now Riverwood is almost done with, let's head back up to the mine. There are more mushrooms to pick up outside, and we also want to head back to the waterfall. At this waterfall equip the Nord's power battle cry, and then carefully aim it at the leaping salmon. This will kill them all, allowing us to harvest a load of salmon which is good for food plus salmon row, another ingredient we will need later on. It's good to make a point of doing this every 24 hours at a waterfall if you can, as we will need a lot of salmon row. We managed to get 7 salmon here and 10 salmon row, so this is a good start. Now time to enter Embershard Mine. Near the entrance after killing two bandits will be a pickaxe. Take this and start mining the iron ore veins in here. At the end of the mine, head into this room and pick up the gold, gems and chest. I managed to get 2 iron ingots and 26 iron ore from in here. This is a good start, but we will need a lot of iron ore, so again, 
make a point of collecting any when you can and either give it to your follower to carry or store it. I'll just quickly now show these are the ingredients we have so far. I went and grabbed the blue mountain flowers so I've not actually picked them up earlier despite mentioning them. Now on our way out of Riverwood stop off at the fishing spot here. You can harvest all the salmon which are hanging here and then do a spot of fishing. The fish we want to catch is this one here, River Betty, and is another ingredient we need. You only need one of these at this stage, but getting more later on will be required, so every time you can, make sure you do some fishing. When you get to White Run, don't head inside just yet. First we need to do some more resource collecting. Head to the furthest farm away on the right, which is the Battleborn farm, and now collect all the wheat here. Raid the barrels as well, especially the ones that contain salt. And now move to the next patch and harvest all the leeks. And then to the next one and harvest the cabbages. As I say, if you get over encumbered, this is what Feindel is for, so make him carry what you can. And now move on and pick up the wheat and so on. And I've not even found all of it, but I've now got 30 cabbages, 23 leeks, 23 potatoes and some tomatoes. But there are more tomatoes around in barrels I think, plus more in white run. Now go into the city and the first thing you want to do is chop some firewood using the axe we picked up earlier. Sell the firewood to Holder at the inn, and you can now raid the place of loads of stuff. A good place to start is the kitchen. More tomatoes in here, plus all this meat. Now go upstairs in the kitchen and you can sleep in this bed now for free. Level up and let's put the perk point into one handed. It's time to go make some food now. Cabbage, potato, leek and tomato make your staple food source in Skyrim, vegetable soup. So make tons of this. We can also finally cook off all the raw meat we were carrying, plus use all the salt. Our guy has worked up a bit of an appetite now, so it's time to sate that hunger with a rabbit haunch and some salmon steak. Find Carlotta in the market and ask her about the bard, Mikhail, and say you will speak to him about her. It's likely at this low level your speech won't be high enough to convince him to stop bothering her, so knock each other senseless instead. This is proper Nordic Skyrim, isn't it? Full on brawls in the pub at 9 o'clock in the morning. Carlotta will pay you handsomely for being her knight in fur armour, but even better than that, free vegetable soup ingredients for life. And these tomatoes are all mine, so back off Nazim. We now have enough food to feed a small army, and this should see us through at least a good part of this adventure now. Head next door to the Alchemist, and it's time to learn our first potion, one that is going to be a cornerstone of this survival mode. Blue Mountain Flour and Wheat makes a potion of Fortify Health. And this is going to be your bread and butter, so always be on the lookout for ingredients. Or even better, plant some at the farm we're going to be getting very soon. A few more little errands to run in White One before we leave. First, walk up to Dragon's Reach and dive into the water. And you'll find quite a few Nordic Barnacles here, another ingredient that we will need later on. And lastly, go down to the blacksmith. We need to make ourselves a backpack. And this is why we needed the corundum ingot I found earlier. One ingot plus a few leathers will make us a backpack that increases our carry weight by 75 points. And the one we want is the hunter one, which also raises bow damage by 10%. Our carry weight, which was halved to 150, now sits at 225 again. A good improvement. Once outside, go speak to Skulvar at the stables and buy the wild horse map. 
On the plains west of White Run, you'll find the first of the wild horses, the red one. And now go and tame one of these. Once done, take your horse back to Skulver and buy a saddle plus armor. Personally, I don't like the look of the vanilla game horse armor, but it greatly increases survivability, and horses have a knack of getting into fights, so it's useful to have. Now we have an armored horse, head east along the road. The location you want to get to is this one, White River Watch. There are a few things we need to collect here. The first being the imp stool mushroom, and you'll find quite a few growing in here. The next item is the fur helmet, which you can find on this small round table here. And this completes our fur set, which is nice. Lastly, raid the barrels in here. Some contain juniper berries, and some others contain canis root. These are the two more ingredients we will require, but if you can't find any, juniper is a very common ingredient around the reach, and canis root is common around the apprentice stone in Morthal. Speaking of Morthal, let's take a carriage over there now. There are lots of deathbell flowers growing around Morthal, so start collecting these. How can I help a brother not? Once done, go and speak to Jonna in the inn and ask her about the burned down house, and this will start the quest laid to rest. All right, then. Now go speak to the Jarl and this will start your investigation into what really happened here. Grogar's fate is in your hands. At the end of this quest, you will be required to kill the vampire Movarth in his lair. Once he is dealt with, pick up the vampire dust. All vampires carry this, and this will be another ingredient we will need, although it's not as essential as the others, more of a nice to have. Tell the Isle of Morthal that Movarth is dealt with, and then ask her if there is anything else she needs, and this will start the quest to become Thane of Morthal, whereby we will need to help the people of the Hold. The vampire quest already counts as one, so we have two more to do but first it's time for a rest and to level up. I'll hold on to these perk points for now though. There isn't anything we currently need and best to save them rather than spend them on something unnecessary. Before we help the people of Morthal, let's first head south. It's time to set up Golden Hills Farm. But just to recap, these are all the ingredients we have gathered so far. Quite a haul but they are all required in some way. Thanks Complete the quest here, the Unquiet Dead, to get the key to the farm. First, chop two firewood outside, and then mine three quarried stone. Now go to the workbench and make the stone planter boxes. You do eventually want to make all of this other stuff, and to do this you will need all these items listed here, so gather these when you can and then come back. Now it's time to get planting all the ingredients we have like the flowers, wheat and mushrooms and so on. I'm going to plant around 5 each of these. Once done, after 24 hours your crops will be ready and you can harvest all of your ingredients. I'm at the point now where everything at the farm is built. Here are the beehives and the upgraded windmill. And then down here are the stables and the bunkhouse. And now it's time to ask Feindel to steward our plantation. And this farm becomes your own personal gold mine once fully set up. Not to mention the resources it generates. Put some of the gold to good use now and also hire the farmhands for 500. And then you want him to also buy the livestock. 600 gold gets you a cow, a few goats and some chickens. You can also upgrade the farm furnishings. But I don't have the gold for that now so we'll do that later on. I'm going to store all the plantable ingredients in the house now. 
These will steadily keep growing now at the plantation. I just want to leave the ingredients we need to gather elsewhere now so I know which ones we're looking at. Our farm will tick along now, so head back to Morthal and time to complete the other two favours. These are really simple to do. If you head over the bridge here to the mill, you'll find another wood chopping block. Just chop a few pieces and then sell it to Jorgen and it counts as one of them. Now find Benor, the local tough guy, and challenge him to a brawl. Kick his ass, and not only do you win the wager, but this bizarrely counts as helping the locals. You ever need my steel by your side? You just ask. And you're now Thane of Morthal. Congratulations. But it isn't really the titles we're interested in, though. Find the Jarl's husband and buy the plot of land for 5,000 gold. Now you might need to do some waiting before you have 5,000 gold, so it's a good time to start gathering some other ingredients and waiting for your farm income to grow. But once ready, purchase this. What you build at the house isn't really that important. I've only done the basic construction here. But what is more important is this item here, the fish hatchery. Build this and deposit a river betty plus salmon row in here. Now every few days you'll be able to harvest these like you would the crops at the farm. Head back to Whiterun now, it's time to progress the storyline on a bit. Start and complete the Bleak Falls Barrow quest and then do Dragon Rising and this will give you your first shout ability, Unrelenting Force. I'm doing this just to show you what you need to do with Unrelenting Force, but if you walk up to the water and use the shout at the salmon, it'll kill them, but it'll also release salmon row. If you simply collect them, you only get the salmon and not the row. Be careful in the water though, the freezing temperatures will harm you. The river better can just be collected as normal, and you'll get three of each of these each time, so it's not a lot. You'll need to use this method in conjunction with fishing for river betty or buying it from alchemists, plus using battle cry to get salmon row at waterfalls. Garlic is an easy ingredient to get, most shops sell it, and anyone you have helped will let you take it for free. The grey main house in Whiterun also has a load of it in a bowl on this bookcase. As for Nordic Barnacles, which is the last ingredient, anywhere with freezing water will have these, so scout out the northern shores, plus this area around Bronzewater Cave. You can also buy this from Alchemists. It's now time to collect another harvest at Golden Hills, and we can also collect the farm profits again, which should give us the gold needed to improve all the interior elements. The Riverwood's agreeable enough, I suppose, for a Nord village. Very good, sir. Ah, 4,000 gold, nice. Mm -hmm. Until next time. It's also worth mentioning if you head inside the farm and go down to the pantry, the crops you have planted will also yield some ingredients into here. Even more ingredients we can store upstairs now. One last thing before we leave Golden Hills again pick up this mammoth tusk, it'll come in handy very soon. Now travel east to Fort Dawnguard and start the quest line. Once we have delivered Sarana back to Harkon, we are going to refuse his offer to become a vampire lord. This will then put us on a journey to recruit two new members of the Dawnguard, Gunmar the blacksmith. He has an impressive beard just like mine. Plus Serene Gerard, the inventor. See you there. All right, then. Serene is who we need as she's the one that gives the quest ancient technology out, which is what led me to run with the crossbow idea. This quest sets you off finding crossbow schematics, which you can then learn to craft yourself. There are actually six steps to this quest, but it's only really the first one I'm interested in. 
The first one allows us to learn now to make an advanced steel crossbow. And later quests allow you to craft different dwarven bolts plus dwarven crossbows. Each schematic will always come with a note referencing a dwarven hall and then a few dwarven metal items. And this leads us nicely onto another part of this build, and probably the most tedious part unfortunately, and that is the gathering of dwarven metal and ingots. By now as well as finding them around Skyrim, you'll be able to buy ingots from smiths, and I recommend always buying these if you can. Go out of your way to buy them and store them, as we will eventually need an absolute truckload. Take the schematic back to Serene and you'll now be able to craft yourself an advanced steel crossbow, once we have the steel smithing perk of course, which I've not grabbed yet. I'll do that soon, but first let's head to Riften. Find the priest Maramel here and buy an amulet of Myra from him for 200 gold. Now remember that mammoth tus we picked up earlier? Take it to Isolde in Whiterun, and she will mention she needs one to give to Madran of the Khajiit caravans. In exchange for this, you'll gain a speechcraft point. And now that's done, let's just equip the amulet we just bought. And now go speak to Isolde again, and a new dialogue will appear. Interested in me, are you? Well, yes, why wouldn't I be? Are you interested in me? It's settled then. A short conversation later, and we are now getting married. Yep, give a Skyrim girl a mammoth tusk, and marriage is on the cards. Life is really that simple in Skyrim. Now head back to Maramel in Riften and arrange your wedding. Congratulations. Once the ceremony is over, ask Isolde to come live with you at Golden Hills Plantation. But on our way back there, I'm going to stop off quickly in Whiterun again. There is a young girl wandering the streets called Lucia, who is actually an orphan. Now her story is a sad one, so we're going to agree to adopt her. Hey, this is good wholesome content I bring you on this channel. There is a slight benefit to this which I'll get onto. Just make sure you have the children's bedroom furnishings at Golden Hills, otherwise you'll have to build her up to then crush her with disappointment. We're back at Golden Hills now, with our wife and daughter, and our ingredients, garlic, Nordic barnacles and salmon roe. Sleep in your bed as we are about to start crafting. Sleeping in a house with one of your children gives you the parents love perk, which means our potions heal more for 8 hours, a small but useful perk to have, and lover's comfort means all our skills grow 15% faster. Now time to get making potions. These three in ingredients make this rather ridiculous potion of water breathing. Anyone that watches my guys regularly will also know I have a standard method for alchemy, and that is make potions until you can put the five perk points in the base of the tree, plus physician and benefactor. And doing it this way will mean your potions are always the best they can be, meaning faster leveling. The only annoying part of survival mode is, you need to go sleep each time you want to level up. But just repeat this process though until your alchemy is at level 100 and you have used up 7 perk points. Look at these potions, the value of these is insane. What is good though is they also boost our health regeneration, which is a great perk to have in survival mode so we can also use these for this build. I'll store most of these, but keep some to carry with us. Whilst we are here, it's time to craft the rest of the potions we'll be using this build, and here are the ingredients. So we have already covered off blue mountain flour and wheat, but now the potion will be a lot stronger, which is great. Canis root and juniper berries makes a fortified marksman potion that will boost our crossbow damage. Canis root, imp stool and mora tapinella make a useful paralysis potion, great for immobilising dangerous enemies in larger fights. Death bell, river betty and thistle branch make a strong poison that also slows enemies down. A 
and vampire dust we aren't actually crafting, but if you eat this, its first effect is invisibility, which I like keeping a few of these on me in case I need to stay hidden at any point. So these are our five potions and poisons which I keep stored here, and carry a batch of on me at all times in case I need them. Now our alchemy is done, it's time to pick up the smithing perk and then make our new crossbow. We can also craft our own bolts here now which is good. And this is now the most tedious part of the build. For this I recommend going and collecting the steed stone. And this will give you an extra 50 points of carry weight, which will come in very handy. Yep, we need dwarven ingots. There are three locations I recommend using for this, but you won't be able to do some of these in one go. These are Mazulft, the Alftan Tower, plus Nchuan Zell inside Understone Keep. And these three locations contain a lot of dwarven metal, Mazulft especially. Free yourself of all but the essential items, take a follower plus your steed, and carry as much as humanly possible back to Golden Hills Plantation. It's worthwhile mentioning anything with an adjective like this bent scrap metal can be smelted down, but this one here that's just called Dwemer can't be. But these pieces that say large, small, solid and so on can be. Just something to bear in mind so you don't carry a load of stuff that you can't actually use. Once you have all your dwarven metal, you'll need to pick up the warrior stone. Remember those iron ingots I mentioned gathering at the start? Combine them with leather strips to make some iron daggers. I have enough leather strips to do 78 of these, which should be enough. And this is just to get us above level 30 which we need to actually unlock Dwarven Smithing. Now pick up the Dwarven Smithing perk, and you can get rid of these Iron Daggers now. I've got 783 ingots, and 337 more Iron Ingots ready. And now time to make Dwarven Bows, lots of them. Once you run out of Iron Ingots, any spare Dwarven Ingots you have can be used to improve the bows at a grindstone. And this has got us over the line to level 100. Now the perks I'm going to get next are Orcish and Ebony Smithing. Odd, I know, as we are wearing and using light armour, but it will make sense. They are called the Before I improve anything, there is an item I want to quickly pick up, and to get this requires us to go to speak to the Orcs at Dushnik Jarl. Now because we are not an Orc, they won't let us in unless we find them the Forge Master's Fingers, a pair of unique gauntlets which increase your smithing. We aren't going to return them though, we'll use them ourselves. It's only a small 12% improvement they give, but because we aren't using enchanting we need all the improvements we can get. I've also managed to find this ring of smithing which is great. I'm hoping to find other items with smithing enchantments eventually, but for now equip everything you have which improves smithing. Before we begin I've collected two blister wart and two glowing mushrooms, and these ingredients make a fortified smithing potion which gives us another 60% at its base increment. We can now take the potion and improve our four pieces to legendary, plus our steel weapons and crossbow as well. Now the armor rating we now sit at is at 246, not majorly high by any stretch, but doing this enchantment free really does make a massive difference, but I enjoy the challenge and it feels like it fits the roleplay element better. In terms of a standing stone ability, lots could be used here, but I feel like the Lady Stone is the best option. One of our potions increases health regen, but having another inbuilt mechanic can't hurt. We can now travel to Solstheim though to get some even stronger gear made, but first we need to complete the main questline up to the point we get the note about the Horn of Jürgen Windcaller. After this point, the Mirac Cultist event will spawn, and you can start the Dragonborn questline. And now it's time to head to Solstheim. I 
What we need to do here is complete the quests, up until the point you get the new source of Stalrim quest, whereby you have to find the Scar's missing blacksmith, Baldor. When you find him and return him, plus recover the Stalrim map, he will teach you how to craft Stalrim armour and weapons, an excellent prize. And this is why we need the Ebony Spinning Perk, because although Stalrim sits on both the light and heavy armour side, it's the Ebony Perk that affects everything. Before we can craft this though, we need to be able to actually mine Stalrim. To do this, speak to Glover Mallory in Raven Rock and recover the ancient Nordic pickaxe from him. This is a ridiculously simple quest where you just need to go ask for it back, and Glover then lets you keep it after all that. An ordinary pickaxe can't mine Stalrim, only this one can. And you can now head to the Stalrim source on your map, which is just north of White Ridge Barrow. I do like mining star room as you get a shock when a draugr appears underneath. You can get 30 pieces at this location, but we only need 26 in total for what we're going to craft. I'm going to replace all our current steel and fur gear, so that is a new star on crossbow we need, a dagger, 4 pieces of the light armour set and a war axe. And then finally once you've built a crossbow, you can then make the enhanced version of this. Now equip your smithing items and take a potion, and then improve the four pieces of armour at the workbench, plus the three weapons at the grindstone. We now have an armour rating of 438 and our warmth rating is still 156. Now I haven't really spoken about what other items I'm using because it's largely depended on what I've been picking up, but the ring I'm wearing currently when not smithing is this one which improves magic resistance which is a really useful skill to have. I'm also using this necklace of disease immunity, now I did break my rule to get this as I think I contracted vampirism about 15 times by this point due to random attacks when traversing the wilderness and I just couldn't take it anymore, it was literally driving me insane. I'll show my skills at this point as well, so level 32, almost 33. I've put most of my perk points into health with some in stamina as well as it improves carry weight. Alchemy is level 100 with 7 perks in. In terms of what you could do next, I'd recommend getting Poisoner and Concentrated Poison. Both are really useful, especially the latter for this build. Now all these magic skills we haven't used at all and don't intend to. Smithing we have our 4 perks from before, plus I've just picked up Arcane Blacksmith. And this is just in case we collect any Star Room Enchanted pieces, so I can also improve them. Our one-handed skill is level 50, and we have three perks in the base, and this is where you want to invest your perks first and foremost in this tree. And then secondary, I'd be looking at getting hack and slash for our axes. Our archery skill is level 55, and again, the base is important, but then you could also invest into critical shot and steady handed. That's probably it, I think, for this skill tree. Light armour is level 47 and again, keep investing in the base of the skill tree and then probably on to matching set is what I'd get next. And then finally sneak is level 62 and I don't think we really need any more perks in this tree. And here is our bearded warrior, doesn't he look great now? I hope you enjoyed this survival mode build. It's definitely more of a challenge playing this way, even more so by keeping it magic and enchanting free. I'm Mike the Gamer Dad and I'll see you next time.